the loot is like really something that's claimed by specialists. And what they do is they, you know, they make up all these theories about how this should sound. And that way they just keep it in the museum, you know, they don't take it out there to the kids. The kids they also love loot. You know, they think it's like really sexy, but the specialists they are like really against that. So you know that's kind of my function to bring it to the people, kind of make it democratic. You know, like okay, this is a great instrument. It's a perfect instrument. It's beautiful. You know, check it out. I travel a lot to do this and the traveling kind of puts you in this trance and then by the time you get at the show you're like completely you know concentrated people always think that you know it's like a glamorous thing and it is in a way but you know they always forget about the preparation part and they're going to the place which for me is a very important part of this ritual, you know, because I, I see it as a, as a loot ritual and, um, in, you know, in that sense, it's like something that's like 400 years old. I also see it as a kind of complaint against uh, contemporary society, you know, doing this. Because it takes this really early instrument. I kind of use the historical instrument and historical sense of trance and the tribal, the tribal idea of traveling to places and sharing this with people, like they used to do on horseback. The music is, is different, um, the traveling is passive and then the music is, uh, I get like carried away and I'm channeling and I'm just open to what's uh, around me. I have the same feeling when I write these pieces, you know? like I try to be really open to what's in the air and what's going around and so I just channel the melodies, you know. And the best pieces are the immediate pieces that get written immediately. There's no thinking about it. I just, you know, they just come like that to me. And it's channeling. It's not something that I feel that, you know, I have kind of composed. I just, you know, they're just around me.
I get like moved by uh, a sentence and I translate that to music and then I use the title so I read these things and then there's this image that you know gets conjured and then I get really into it it's not you know I don't see it as something that's like a dogma or something that you have to believe in people who start to think about religion if I can be like kind of a motor this historical Western spirituality. That's, you know, then I've kind of achieved my goal, you know. But again, you have to see it in the context of the whole work, you know, not by itself, you know. It's just one, one part of it. And I'm kind of against, you know, a lot of things that are wrong with contemporary society. And I also like to be a musician and to be outside the law, making a living outside the law. Uh, so this outlaw thing is kind of really important for me. You know, I don't really have to answer to, you know, authorities or anything. So you, have, you make a living being outside society. And that's great, you know. I think I show that also in my work. Um, it's like, you know, I fought the law and I won, you know. So, um, yeah, I think musicians have that function to go against that. And in that way it's political too. Yeah. You meet people on the road and the people you like uh, the most you work with, you know, I still see that as like a, a boy's dream, you know, it's like, a, like you make music with your friends. And the best uh, collaborations, or I wouldn't even call them collaborations, the best uh, duos that you're doing is usually with uh, people, you know, you have a personal relationship with. We met on the streets of New York in, uh, I think it was 2004, and um, uh, we became real good friends. He was interested in lutes and stuff, so I shared a lot of information with him about, you know, historical stuff and about the instruments and, you know, lute players, composers and so on. The way he makes his films is more like, uh, like a, as a musician than as a filmmaker, really, because usually he comes up with the music uh, first, or he has, you know, he has this idea of, of a music score, and then you know uh, he will film, you know, the, the images come later. And I think he also really writes the, the film or the script, you know, listening to a lot of stuff, and so. It's the set, you know, the sensibility of uh, of a musician, really. Uh, 
and now he's shooting a vampire film which uh, um, is about this, uh, well, this vampire who is into string instruments and he, uh, he gets a loot from his vampire lover in the film. So, um, yeah, so it's kind of, yeah, it's really cool. We share a lot of interests. Also, for example, uh, you know, like writers like William Blake or Swedenborg. So there's an immediate bonding of, of uh, you know, of stuff we both, you know, enjoy, you know, and uh, that kind of creates this duo now that we're doing. And this record is coming out in February um, that uh, we just made, and uh, they're all Swedenborg titles. The record is called Concerning. The, uh, concerning the entrance into eternity. I guess, you know, it's become quite known now what I'm doing, you know, so I guess like what I wanted from it is kind of like achieved in a way. I get asked, you know, a lot of questions about loot and, you know, the whole thing has become quite, you know, taken serious now. It doesn't have that bad image anymore where, you know, it's like a Robin Hood image where you stand under a balcony and then you get a flower pot thrown at you, you know, by the lady, you know, it's not like that. It's more like now it's like, you know, it's uh, grown up. The loot finally is now in the pantheon of serious instruments, you know, which I'm happy about. I think you know, I think I helped that uh, happen a little bit. I hope so, you know, hope to think that. Mm -hmm. 